Okay, we're ready. I'll do a short intro. Well, good morning, church. On Easter Sunday, what I say is he is risen, and in response, you yell back, he is risen indeed. So he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We are so glad you've come to join and be with us this morning for Easter worship. I'm Pastor Katie. Up here with me is Pastor Beverly and Pastor Perrin. We're so glad that you're here. Special welcome to everyone who is joining us online for Easter worship as well. We hope that you feel so blessed this morning. I'm going to invite everyone, um, if you are able in body or spirit, 
Let's stand and call one another to worship this morning. What are you looking for? Life before the dawn. What are you looking for? A, A reason, reason to hope. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? A place, A place to belong. belong. What are you looking for? We are looking for the Messiah. Good news! Come in. Love is alive. Surely God is in this place. Our opening hymn this morning is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 302, the first through fourth verses. seeking grace, this moment is for you. 
If you are seeking growth, this moment is for you. If you are seeking honesty, this moment is for you. In the prayer of confession, we admit to ourselves and to God that we do not have it all figured out. And in that vulnerability, we are surrounded by God's grace. So let us pray together. God of empty tombs and empty people, when we hesitate to speak of your hope, forgive us and give us voice. When we find it difficult to love one another, forgive us and give us new compassion. When we want to stand with the high and mighty, forgive us and put us next to the poor and oppressed. When we stay locked behind our fears and doubts, forgive us and send us out to share your grace. When we cannot believe your word of new life, forgive us and fill us with your joy. Christ comes into every shadowed corner of our lives with the light of Easter. Christ comes into the locked rooms of our faults and gifts us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace, that we may proclaim the good news of mercy and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Christ has come to us. Amen. In response, we're going to sing together this song to remember the words of Zephaniah 3. Did anyone think I'd pull out Zephaniah in an Easter service? But I just did. Zephaniah 3, where it says, God delights, delights over us with singing and with dance. And so we're going to sing together verse 1 and verses 3 through 5 of number 261, the Lord of the Dance.
beloved, we're going to affirm our faith together this Easter morning, and as we do that, I'm going to invite those who are ready to become members of Grace United Methodist Church to join me here-ish. That's you, Ira. Come on up. Yeah. Betty, that's you. Come on up. All right. Will you follow with me? We believe in resurrection, mysterious, beyond our understanding, and yet, like tulips after the snow, real. We believe in Easter morning in the promise of a God who would roll back every stone to return to us. Hold on a second. I love that you all want to join the church, but I just need the Mirror family for this part. So the rest of you, go sit down. That counts, right? I can count those with my... No. <laughs> Have a seat. Almost. Just the... All right. Come on up here. Come on up here. We said something about believing in Jesus. All right. We're, sorry. We're picking back up. We believe in Jesus who calls us by name and asks, who are you looking for? So we look for justice, for mercy, and for God in our midst. As we look, we say, Alleluia, Amen. All right. Now. To those who are ready to join the church, I have big questions for you. Are you ready? Can I tell you a secret? The answer is yes. All right, you ready? Do you love God, and do you want to be part of what God is doing in this place? Yes. Okay, everyone should respond with the yes like that. Did you feel that enthusiasm? Yes. All right, here's some big words. Ready? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Yeah. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all beloved identities? See, look, I even made a bolt. All. What was that? Yes. Yes, yes, okay. And are you ready to bring your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, your witness, and your pretty new colored pages that you just did to the work of God's love in this place? Yes! Yes! I could have built a whole church with that enthusiasm. I love it. Did you know for centuries people would spend this time of Lent preparing for the gift of Easter to come and be part of the church? What, we're with, what we are witnessing is something that has been as historic as Easter itself. So I'm going to invite you, congregation, in your bulletin, let's tell them how excited and happy we are that they're joining the church. Shall we, together? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus. Now, do you know what the best part is about joining the church? I buy presents for you. All right, now, let me begin with this. Church, you know Pastor Beverly. She has so fallen in love with us in this place that she says, I think... I want to see what it would be to be ordained as a Methodist pastor. And we said, first step is to join a Methodist church. So your gift is the Methodist Book of Worship to get you ready on your journey. Now, do you know what I got for you guys? This is Pastor Perrin and me's favorite Bible. Oh my gosh, it has got the best pictures in it. You're going to love it. Yeah, you can have it. It's all for you. It's all for well, and your siblings, are you going to share? Okay, now, and that, that's, that's next Sunday's sermon. And then for mom, joining the Church of Grace, we have for you the book, What's So Amazing About Grace. And now, Phyllis and Brad Hershey, as members of our church, they have the most important job. They have to give you hugs and officially welcome you into Grace Church. All right, so let's show our welcome and hooray! <laughs> Good job. 
hugging, but it's time to sing now, so you have to stop hugging is what I heard. asking questions. We have turned over every rock. We have shined a light in every dusty corner. We have opened the blinds. We have wrestled with truth. We have sought after you. So on this Easter morning, bring wisdom to our seeking. Move through this room until the walls echo with the sound of hallelujahs. Roll back the stones that might prevent us from drawing closer to you. Calm our hearts, say our names, awaken us to your presence in our midst. We are here, we are listening, we are seeking after you. Alleluia, amen. This morning the story comes to us from the Gospel of John chapter 20. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over. He saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. When Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. 
At that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scripture said Jesus would rise to life. So the two of them went back to the other disciples. Mary stayed. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside of the tomb. She was still weeping when she stooped down and saw two angels inside. They were dressed in white, and they were sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was at the head, and the other was at the foot. And the angels asked Mary, Why are you crying? And she answered, They have taken away my Lord's body, and I don't know where they put him. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know who he was. So Jesus asked her, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you have taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus told her, Don't hold on to me. I have not yet gone to the Father. But tell my disciples I am going to the one who is my Father and my God, as well as your Father and your God. Mary Magdalene then went and told the disciples she had seen the Lord, and she also told them what he had said to her. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. In response, we're going to sing the first two verses of 314, I Come to the Garden. friends now it's time and you all can come right here look at all this big space I got for you come have a seat right here for Pastor Perrin and I have great things to tell you now I'm curious who had a good time with Pastor Perrin's egg hunt was that good did I hear that she told you something about strawberries yeah. were there's yeah. did you get to eat the strawberries yeah. no. oh there's only one there's only one strawberry, one strawberry. well hi Hannah Oh, no, no, no. I think that means she's ready to join the church, man. Everyone who comes up there. Hi, Wavy Lou. Oh, no. Hi, friends. Hello.
hello, hello. <gasps> Hannah, do I see your baby brother here? <gasps> Is your baby here, Hannah? <gasps> <laughs> All right, so do you guys remember what my name is? Who am I? Pastor, Pastor Katie. Katie. You are Reverend Pastor Katie Cooper Nix. Leave it to my son to get the oh, full man. title in there. We'll just go with Pastor Katie for today. And you remember, who's, who am I? Pastor Perry. Pastor Perrin. Oh, I love it. it. Now, today is a special day. Why is today special? Because it's Easter. Because it's Easter, and we come to church and we get candy. candy. Yes. <laughs> now, I've got some special stuff here. Does anyone know what all this stuff is I've got up here? Um, I think it's for the, like, like the bread. Oh, yeah. very good. This is communion. And you want to see what we have for communion? Did you know someone makes communion every time? And look what she made us this time. It looks like it's chocolate. Oh, and you know what? It's chocolate and gluten-free, uh, wherever Mickey yes. is. Yes? Yes. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Now, do you know what my job is here at the church? I only show up on Sundays. That's all I have to do. Nope. <laughs> yeah. My job at the church is I have to help everybody who comes in here feel welcome and feel loved so that's one of the things i do is i serve communion now i got a question for you you ready can you take communion alone all by yourself no. No. very good very good you always have to take communion with other people right because when we take communion today we're going to remember that god loves us and god wants us to love who God wants us to love others. So that's my job. But I have a different job than Pastor Katie. Does anybody know what my job is? To make the fun happen. To, to make, make the, the fun, fun happen. happen. Done. I love that. Done. Period. I love it. My job is to help connect our church to the world outside the church, like our neighborhood or our schools. So what? To make Yeah, to make so sure that, everybody in the world feels welcome and that everybody's taken care of. Can we make her pastor now or yeah. is it too early? Pa yeah. Pastor okay. Lillian, right here, everybody. What school do you all go to? Uh, Elementary preschool. LMS. Jackson Park, LMS, Flynn Park. Flynn Park. Oh, yeah. Which one is it? Conway. Conway, Elementary. Elementary. Say it again. M-R-H-E-C-C. -C. Wow. That's a long one. Yeah, which one? Which one? Yeah. Do you like it there? Yeah. Another way that we connect the church to the community is with our food pantry every Tuesday. So people who need some food can come and get it, and they don't have to worry about how much money they have. Guess how many neighbors came to our food pantry this week? Less than a thousand. What? Two hundred. Less than two hundred. Do you think Ooh, it was just five? Very close. No. It was eighty. Eighty people came to our food pantry. That's eighty boxes of mac and cheese. Do you all like mac and cheese? I like mac and cheese. No. <laughs> eighty jars of peanut butter. Wow. Some mac and cheese critics. <laughs> What about peanut butter? Do you like peanut butter? No. Oh, yeah. A mixed crowd. Okay. You know, half and half. Okay, so today is a really special day when our jobs combine like superheroes. Watch. We're going to be like, boom. All right? Because here's what's going to happen. In a moment, we're going to collect our offering today. Guess where all the money is going to go today? People. Very good. It's going to go to church. It's going to be something special that we do that Perrin was just talking about on Tuesday. With the mac and cheese and the peanut butter. Where was that at? Grocery store. <laughs> okay, in our minds, this worked a lot better. Uh, we're going to give an offering, and it's all going to go to the 
food pantry. Oh, the food pantry. So that way, when we come to communion later, we can remember that Jesus feeds us and calls us to feed other people. Did we get it? Does that make sense? Communion, food pantry, connected, yes? Yes! yes thank you, Ira. I just <laughs> needed the confidence. I love it. All right, how about we're going to pray together, and then we're going to invite the ushers forward. So you guys want to pray with me? They're going to sing a beautiful song. Hey, have you guys liked the music today? Yes! Oh my gosh, it's been pretty so awesome, pretty. isn't it? Let me see. Have, have you liked the music today? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. The choir is pretty choir amazing. Is amazing. They are pretty amazing. All right, we're going to pray together. You're going to repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you for all the ways, for all the ways you take care of me, you take care of me. Be with our church, be with our church, and use the money we get, and use the money we get to help show others, to help show others, and care for others, and care for others the way you care for us, the way you care for us. Now, on Easter. I expect a glorious amen. You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Amen. Excellent. All right, you guys may head back on over there and usher, so you may come forward to receive our gifts.
God, on this day when we remember your overflowing gifts of love and grace, we pray a special blessing on this offering, a blessing upon all the volunteers and those who serve and care for all of those in our neighborhood. May you use these gifts so that all may know that they are loved. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As I was preparing my Easter sermon, I came upon a dangerous theory that I'm going to share with you this morning. I think it has some merit, but it is a little out there. Okay? I think when Jesus told his disciples, unless you become like a child, you'll never enter the kingdom. Right? We know Jesus had a track record of hanging out with kids. I think it went a little too far, and here's why. I think Jesus spent so much time with toddlers that Jesus himself became a toddler. Here's why, right? Toddlers say the craziest things. They fall asleep in random places. They hate bath time. And they never stop asking questions, right? Let's look at Jesus. Tells people, I am the bread of life, and those who believe me must eat my flesh. Two, fell asleep on a boat in the middle of a storm. Three, my personal favorite, walks on the water to see Peter rather than get in the water. I mean, if that's avoiding bath time, I don't know what is. And more importantly, he begins and ends his whole story in the Gospel of John with questions. In fact, the first words that Jesus will utter in God's, John's Gospel don't come until all the way in verse 38. And he asks two young men, what do you want? Then we fast forward to our text this morning and the final words that Jesus will utter to Mary in the garden who are you looking for? Interesting, right? Rather than making these grandiose, ambitious statements showing off how important he is, Jesus starts and ends his whole work with a very invitational approach. Simple questions. Which I find, personally, a lot less threatening, right? It gives me more space to wonder and to doubt, and it takes away that edge of punishment or rejection. It's as if Jesus is trying to frame this entire story with love. Now this is how John begins his gospel. He writes, in the beginning was the one who was called the Word. And the Word was with God and was truly God, and from the beginning the Word was with God, and with the Word, God created everything. You know what that stirs up for me? That image from Genesis where God spoke and life came to be. And you remember what God used to describe the creation? God made it and called it, called it good. God makes all these amazing, beautiful things, especially you and me, and calls it good. And when we forget that, when these other voices try to tell us that we are less than, when we hear words like you're broken or you're not good enough, God said, I can't let them forget who they are, who I made them to be. So I'm going to pick this one spot, this one moment in all of time and space to be with my good creation. And I'm going to speak that word, that word of love over them again. That's what we celebrated at Christmas, right? That's the, the miracle in the manger. But John continues in his opening of his gospel, and he says, Now the Word became flesh and blood 
and moved into the neighborhood. He was in the world, and the world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did, whoever believed who he said he claimed to be and would do what he said, he would make to be their true selves. Isn't that beautiful? That those who simply believe that God's love is real, that they were made good, that the word, our Jesus, would give life. A life that's no longer held captive by the evil of the world. A life that's no longer a slave to words like fear or power or greed. Life that could free those who were oppressed and bring purpose and hope. The word spoke this truth into the chaos. The word said, I am a good shepherd. You don't have to follow these people who say you aren't good enough anymore. The word said, I am the light of the world. You don't have to fear the darkness because you're never alone. And then the word said something really powerful said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And what began at Christmas, this miracle of the Word becoming flesh, is going to become more than just one moment for one group of people. Love embodied is going to become love everlasting. The temporary will now be exchanged for forever. And when Jesus looks at Mary in our text today, he says, I'm going to go back to my God and your God. You see what he did there? A promise that is personal and enduring, this intimate and yet open to everyone. The miracle of Christmas, now fulfilled in the miracle of Easter. The Word of God that spoke you into existence and called you beloved. Does not speak to you this morning with guilt or shame. The word simply invites you to claim what has always been. That God so loved you. God gave his word to become flesh and blood in our neighborhood so that no one can be destroyed by these false words or these harmful lies ever again. God did not go through all the trouble of sending the Son merely to point this accusing finger and to tell you how bad it is. God came to help, to put the world right, so that whoever believes this truth of God will have whole and lasting life. That's what we celebrate this morning. And all of God's people said, Amen. Friends, it would have been easy on that Easter morning for Jesus to roll away the stone, walk to the city center, and declare that death had not won. Instead, Jesus waited in the garden. He waited for the people who needed him most. He waited for Mary. He called her by name. He stopped her crying, and he gave her a reason to hope. So if you have ever doubted that God's love for you is personal and specific, may the truth of this day remind you otherwise. The God you seek will meet you in the garden on your hardest days. And that same God has a seat saved at this table specifically for you. So come, come whether you're dancing for joy, or like Mary, still feeling a little lost. Come with your questions. Come with your hunger. Come, whether this is your first time or your hundredth. Come because this feast is a reminder 
that's, that God's table is big. Enough for all of us. Jesus Christ is risen today and he rose for you. So come, all, yes, we mean all are welcome. Join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Resurrecting God, Mary went to the garden looking for you. 2,000 years later, we follow in her footsteps. We seek after you, hungry for a garden moment where we might hear you say our name or feel you in our midst. So before the hallelujahs begin, we empty our pockets of our prayers and remember where we've been. With gratitude, we recall Monday Thursday. We are grateful for the tables we gather around, for the friends that feel like family, and for this church, which acts as our band of disciples. We hold on to the reminder of you washing the disciples' feet that night and trust that the same love extends to us. With sorrow, we recall Good Friday. We grieve the depths of cruelty woven into that day, a cruelty so many in this hurting world know. So, for those who are still caught in grief and loss, for those whose days have turned to night, relieve them of their suffering. Find them in the crowd, wipe their tears, hold their grief for them and point them toward peace. Now with hope we enter into this Easter morning to find ourselves face to face with your good news. Thank you for giving us reason to hope. Thank you for the sunrise after a long night, for the healing of bones and hearts, for laughter that is contagious, and for the joy felt in community. Tether every gratitude and joy in our life back to you. And now we come to the table just as Mary came to the tomb. We ask that in every stage of our seeking, you would be near us. Pour out a double portion of your spirit on this bread and cup that we might see you as clearly as Mary did. And may this meal nourish us to build your kingdom here. Until that promised day, we pray together using the words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna ask those who are assisting with communion to come forward. As we remember love that was broken for you so that brokenness would never be the final word again amen love that was poured out for you so that love can continue to be poured out in all that we do in just a moment beloved we're going to invite you forward here to the table of grace that table which is open to all and to make sure is gluten-free for all as well. You're going to see we've got four stations here, and Perrin is actually going to come here, and I'm going to put James at that station there. Here we go. In a moment, the ushers are going to invite you to come forward. We also have a fifth station over here with Miss Mickey, um, and that is prepackaged communion, if you would feel more comfortable receiving it that way. Simply come forward and hold out your hands, and for the sake of cleanliness, the ones with the gloves will just drop it into your hands so we only have one hand in the plate. So, the gifts of God for the people of God come, for all things have been ready just for you.
Next in your bulletin, will you join with me in the parts in bold for our prayer? Holy and gracious God, here at this table, your promise of life is now made tangible. We have rested in the depths of your love. We have tasted your nourishing, nurturing presence. We accept you into our bodies, into our lives. Together at this table, you have offered us life. Together by your grace, we accept the life you offer and we give you thanks. Now, in just a moment, we are gonna to stand to sing our closing hymn. And right after that is going to be something that I know is a beloved tradition for many. And we will be singing, I can already see people going, yeah, it's coming. We're gonna be singing the Hallelujah Chorus, which I sing in the shower, but now will be even better, I promise. So in just a moment, both lovely pastors are gonna be at either side for those who want to come up and join the choir for that final postlude to get the music. So, if you want to sing with the postlude, you can start coming up now. Everyone, let's rise and sing together our closing hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
Beloved, let us bless one another together. For Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am now sending you. God believes in you. The busy world awaits your compassion. God believes in us. Sometimes you will give your best, yet fail. But God believes in us. Other times you will succeed in spite of your stumbling. God believes in us. Go gladly, daring to succeed or fail to the glory of God. And then at the very end, nothing shall dismay you. God believes in us. With Christ's own breath within us, we shall travel well. The help of the saving Christ, the wisdom of the living God, and the support of the loving Spirit be with you every step of the way, now and always. Amen. I was told to stand. Oh, <laughs> 